go to the window menu and astute graphics and down to dynamic shapes. Dynamic shapes panel pops up here and it's part of the vector scribe set from astute graphics. And there's a lot of functionality. Illustrator has a few tools, quite a reasonable section, rectangles, stars, etc. But this adds a load more. So it's really, really useful to have these sort of features if you want stars, if you want pluses, etc. within Illustrator. So where's the tool? So here's the tool over here. That's the dynamic shape tool. And here's the actual dynamic shapes. You can also simply just go back to selection tool, backwards and forwards, and manipulate them like a normal path as well. So let's go for rectangle. And I'm not going to show everything because as you can see from this panel, there's a lot of functionality. There's a lot of functionality here. There's also a preferences as well. So you've got another set of functionality as well. A lot to explain if everything was covered. So let's just go for a rectangle. And you'll see straight away, the rectangle that's created is slightly different from the standard rectangle. When you drag it out, it drags out in a slightly different way. Slightly disconcerting at first, but you get used to it and you can manipulate it, move that down, backwards and forwards. However, the angle, you can always go back to the selection tool and manipulate it, rotate it and all that sort of stuff if you want to do that. Another thing that's really quite useful about this is I'm just going to go to the right side menu. Right side menu. If you ever get to a situation where you've seemed to have found where you can't get out of because some of the settings seem to be wrong, you can always go to basic shape and it puts it back to a basic shape, the basic square, the basic rectangle, the basic ellipse. So if you get something I a few times, suddenly find I've got a line or something, I can't seem to get it back to being an ellipse. That is the quickest way always to reset is basic shape. And also you've got reset transformation angle as well, which is useful. So you've got this design. It is interactive, so you can modify all the settings here. You can reposition it, you know, turn around and say, I want it at 20. I want it at, you know, minus 280. Slightly confusing. It's minus 280. You wouldn't have thought it's minus 280. It should be 280, but unfortunately, the way that the uh, Illustrator board is done, it's done inverted with minus. Anyway, I've always thought that it's the wrong way around, but that's the way it works. Also, you can manipulate the corners. So go to corners, 20. You can see you can then get rounding. Maybe go for 200. Obviously, you get to a circle at that point. 150 is the max. It will just put it to the max. So there's 100. You can also go for these as well. You've got also different options here. So you just go through it, run through that. And you can see, just from a rectangle, you can create some pretty unique designs. And you can still manipulate it from here. These little, sort of, every one of these tools has got little interactive tools. You, anything you see red like that, and I don't know if you can change the color, Dynamic shape preferences. Yes, there's probably that is the color there. You probably can change it if you want. Personally, keep it red. And also you can manipulate it. So you can make pie slices in all of the tools. I'm gonna not going to be held on that because maybe some don't. But I think all of them generally have this feature where you can just manipulate pie slice, which I think is quite really nice to create all kinds of unusual designs with even a basic rectangle. You've got that, you've also got the corner. Now, personally, I'd never change it. True radius, there is a slight, very subtle difference, sometimes useful, sometimes not. Uh, let's just go for a circle. So a circle. Now, circle, you've got that. Now, you might decide, you know what? Oh, I don't want that. I don't want that. You can see all the various settings still left over from something else. You can always go, bring it back to just a normal shape. Always right menu, basic shape and you've got basic shape game. Great start point for that. And then you can manipulate this. And you can see as you do that, there, just resizes it. However, what you've also got is this. You've got, still got the pie slice, so you can create nice pie slice. Not such a thing now in the way it is because, of course, Illustrator's got pie slice as well, but I think this is still a nice implementation of that. And again, you've got here, segments. And you can turn around and say, well, I want segments here, right? And Okay, it doesn't change the shape. Doesn't change the shape, so you can see it's still a circle. Still a circle, but it does mean that when you expand, and if you go up to object and expand, and you've got it just as a normal path, then you go to the direct selection tool, you can see now you've got all these points. And the points means you can manipulate the design, 
create all kinds of unique shapes from that. Obviously, it's not dynamic anymore, but you that's the reason for the segments, which I think is quite nice. Again, here you've got this one, the next one, dynamic rectangle. And you can see as you drag that out, again, it's got that pie slice because, of course, it's still left over from the last one. But that's reasonable. You might want that. You might be quite happy with these settings to be carried through. So 50. And you can still manipulate them. You can still manipulate that as well. And again, angle, maybe decide, you know what? I want it at 50. And you can still change that, move it around like that. Create that sort of shape as well. Or this shape. And so on and so on. Now, some of the other shapes are probably less well known. You've got this one, a ring shape. So a ring dynamic donut, as it's called. <laughs> dynamic donut. Not a ring, a dynamic donut. So a donut, and again, it's got the same, and it's got obviously all the settings left over, so you've got exactly as before. You've got the gap, the pie slice. And you can always just click there, and it sort of sets it back like that, which is maybe useful, but still interesting. However, you can just quickly set it back, or, as I said, always just go back to basic shape. And you can just set it straight away. It sets all the segments back because you've got segments is here as well. Exactly the same. So you can put it to 20 segments and you can see all these dots. So when you expand, you will get all these dots, which you may or may not want. And you can still continue to manipulate these settings. So obviously this is not much use. So 30, if I enter something, you can see it does change something. It actually adds some additional points. So let's just put 100. And you can see you can create a variety of different designs. So even there, that functionality introduces something slightly more interesting. And again, go through those as well. That may make a slight difference as well. Let's just move that one. You've got the arrow. I think that's great. An arrow design is something that should have been in Illustrator for years. So it's nice. Now, you can see straight away the problem. I've just created this design. Because of the settings that's carried forward, I can't access it. So what you need to do, go to basic shape. And now if I add the arrow, you can see the arrow, which is great. So I can now manipulate it. And you've got here thickness. So let's just change the value. So you can put it, say, down to uh, five. So five. And you can make, so the thickness being this. So that just, and also you can just drag those as well. Just drag that down. Actually, that's weird. I just thought those would have changed that, but clearly not. Maybe it's too close, 20. No, it just moves it backwards and forwards. That's the angle. Hmm. I would have called it something slightly different, slightly confusing the word angle. But however, you can drag it backwards and forwards like that. Unfortunately, you can't seem to... Nope. Can't drag inwards. But you can do it here. Thickness. It's fine. Just have to enter it there. So 70. And also you've got other settings here you can change as well. So you can put 100 there. And you can see it just changes the size changes position, and again, you've got angle, so you decide the angle, 50, and so on. So you can see you've got a great little arrow. Now, it's not the most amazing, and it'd be wonderful if it was a double arrow as well, because it really should have a, at this end as well, would be nice. So you could have two, one at the other end as well. Surprised they didn't add that, still. However, let's just get to the next tool. Let's deselect that, and again, you, of course, go back to the selection tool, there it just becomes just a standard shape, which you can then, of course, Manipulate, distort, apply effects to, etc. But if you want it dynamic shape, just keep it like that, and you can still then manipulate it again and still continue to change it. Let's just change now. Has it lost its ah? Looks like it's lost it at this point. No, can't change it. Certain point, obviously, it breaks it, and then you have to just create it again. That seems to be the way. Okay. Click there, and then what you've got else here, you've got here, which I think is quite nice, a dynamic cloud. Really quite good, you can't beat a dynamic cloud. And again, you've got this, and again, you've got some settings here, you've got puffiness. So you can turn around and say, oh, I want five, six, oh, it's a bit, can you put it up more? 10, no, five is the limit, mirror. So you can just make it mirror, oh, that's nice. It, well, it doesn't mirror exactly, because that seems to got a couple of extra points there. Also, you've got here different types of bottom as well. So you can create, let's just reset it. We've got to reset the shape, basic shape. And maybe set the angle a zero. 
So you can see it like that. Makes it much easier to see it, doesn't it, when it's the right way around. And you've got different shapes. Flat bottom three, flat bottom eight, flat, and so on. So you can, oh, puff bottom five. <laughs> Great names. Wonderful names. Oh, and you can also run through just with these little things. That's nice. A nice touch. And also a mirror again, so you can... Ah, oh, no, mirror is not mirror. It's flip. It just mirrors it, flips it. Okay, that's explanation why that was... Uh, I wonder what that was, mirror. That's what it does. So flat bottom just flips it backwards and forwards. Right. Clouds are useful. I think it's quite nice, especially if you've got sort of, uh, obviously, a sky that you want to draw. So I'm just going to remove that. Then you've got here, crescent. Now you've got crescent. Now crescents are relatively easy to create anyway because you've got a circle and you cut the circle out. But still, it's nice to have this feature. And again, you've got some interactivity, so you can sort of go backwards and forwards there. You can turn around. And again, anything you can do, you can see you've got here, inner. So 45. And you can change the inner part. And you can do that there as well. So I think that's quite great. Some nice sort of interactive crescent. Great if you want moon in the background for your clouds as well. And again, you've got all the functionality, angle, etc., as before. So remove that one, plus. And then you've got plus. Now you can change that backwards and forwards. Now, weirdly, and I must admit I find that slightly unusual, that the uh, there's no corner radius feature. You would have thought that radius would have been an obvious choice in this because you would like nice rounded ones, but doesn't seem to have. You've got the uh, this option here. And, it, oh, and it's lost the, uh, when I mentioned about the pie slice, not all of them clearly have the pie slice. Though, to be honest, the pie slice would be nice in here as well, just a little pie slice. Can't see a reason why not. Likewise, if it would be symmetrical, it would be even nicer. Again, you've got thickness, and you can just increase those to do that. But it's nice to see a plus feature in this application. Gear. So gear one. Now this one is probably the most thing. So let's just quickly basic shape. So put it back to the basic shape. And you can see the gear. So there's a lot of functionality. You've got tooth, HT, whatever that is, tip, root size, base. And you can just, of course, just so and set them. So decide so let's go and enter it. 10. And you can see what happens. It just reduces it down. Maybe put it to 100. And you can see variety of that's just from the gear one and you've also got teeth now it seems that uh, that you can only go up to so let's put 40 oh you can go up to 40 didn't seem weird sometimes these uh, up downs often you click and they just ignore but obviously maybe i've just slightly offset but however let's just go for 20 so you can see it a bit better so you can see here you've also got root size so you can go for three and let's go for 50 and you can see a variety of different designs it can be changed by base 20 so so 70 there change the base and you can see it just by changing these just run through them so bowing okay bowing oh makes it more sort of like a sharp edged sort of design again it would have been nice to have had the corner features the radius features in it very strange that they didn't include that, as well as the pie slice would have been nice. Still, gears, absolutely brilliant, really love it. Great feature. Click there again, and you've got the heart one, heart design again, of course, basic shape, always good. You've got basic shape now, of course, it's the wrong angle. Don't want it at that angle, so I'm just gonna quickly create it again. Put it that way, so, and you can hold down the shift. You hold the shift so it constrains it. That's another nice feature. And then release. And you've got that option so you can see you've got depth. So that's the depth field. You can modify that. And you've got point now. That just changes that, wouldn't would assume. Yes, it does. Oh, there is a very limited range. Hmm, that's strange. Wonder why. So why not 30? Oh, 30. So you've got 30. Hmm. Strange, the actual interactivity just didn't seem to allow me to do it. But uh, now it can, that's right, it's a bit, oh, it looks like you have to enter it within here, more than here. It doesn't seem to move much when you're changing it here. It's got a very slow change. And also you've got around the side. Again, that would be nice to have had a segment feature. So just having just those, those points, be nice if you could have had segments. 
but it doesn't seem to have that feature. And again, you've got angle, you've got the position it. Position it, I'm not so certain that's so useful personally for me, because of course you can just interactively just move it, click on there, and you can still edit it. So I think that's just easier to do personally. However, for me, probably the last one's really useful because I love doing comics. And so there you just quickly create a good old word balloon. Excellent stuff, word balloon, can't beat a word balloon. Or speech balloon, a dynamic speech bubble. <laughs> Might even get it right. Maybe that's why whenever I put uh, word balloon, no one knows what I mean, a speech bubble, I should have guessed. But you can see you've got interactivity here, so you can, Generally, if you can see these little square things, it means there's some interactivity, so you can move it backwards and forwards, which is nice. Not many speech bubbles would have that look though, so, but it's more like that sort of conventional sort of speech bubble. And you can manipulate, obviously, make it size it and rotate it. You can see the whole range of possible functions. And of course, said right side menu, there's a load more other features. Convert to dynamic shape, convert to dynamic state, strict, Remove dynamic status. So if you want to, of course you can expand it, go to the object menu and expand. You can also remove dynamic status, keep in corners. So if you've got some corners involved, then that's good, move dynamic status. So it ceases to become dynamic and you can't modify it. It's, it's lost its ability to be changed here. And that's it, run through of dynamic shapes. I think it's a great little tool, absolutely wonderful feature of Vectorscribe and uh, well, just check it out. You can get obviously a trial version on the Astute Graphics website, really worth checking out. And also it comes with Mirror Me, which I think is one of the best plugins ever as a freebie, which I absolutely love. Obviously, if that offer is not available when you're looking at this video, my apologies, it's always possible. But I assume that Mirror Me, well, I love that feature. So, dynamic shapes, hope you found this of interest. Thank you much.